guys welcome to my channel if you're new my name is Din and I'm going to show you how to prepare your ingredients mix the spices and then cook the dish very simple method I'm going to use so please follow the instructions carefully so let's cook hi guys welcome back to my channel I'm chef Din and I'm going to show you today how to make restaurant quality naans I'm going to cook these naans in a tandoori oven today because I've had lots of requests asking how to use uh, their tandoori oven uh, which they've bought and uh, to produce good quality naans. These are like you would get in the restaurant so uh, follow my instructions exactly uh, to uh, get these naans perfect. So first uh, in a jug uh, mix all the ingredients that are listed and get that ready first and uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, make uh, perfect naans like you would do in a restaurant but there is a, a process to this like the mixture uh, has to be made one day in advance it cannot be made on the same day it just won't work so uh, what you do is make the naan mixture first then put it in the fridge and then the following day you can use it. This is what we used to do in the restaurant as well. People, they don't realize this. You cannot make the naan mixture the same day and then make the naans. We don't use yeast in our naans. This is not the correct method because yeast is using bread but not naan mix. In naan mix they use yogurt, uh, they use eggs, they use milk, uh, all different types of ingredients but not yeast. Uh, I'm not sure where this East business comes from because all my years in the restaurant trade uh, I've never used East uh, in making naans and I've never seen any of my friends running uh, restaurants uh, using East either. So where do people get this info from that to use East in their naan bread is completely wrong. It, we, do, we just don't use East. So uh, as you can see mix the ingredients in well like this first use a spoon it's much uh, uh, easier without uh, making too much mess so uh, I, I've uh, used milk water uh, egg one egg only to one kilo of uh, plain flour I've used uh, because I couldn't get self-raising flour so I've used plain flour and basically added 12 grams of uh, baking powder. When you use uh, self-raising flour you just use uh, maybe a couple of teaspoons of baking flour so uh, I've kind of compensated this by not having self-raising flour but in the restaurants we use self-raising flour uh, when we make our naans. So this is uh, uh, the mixture uh, we are creating. It's not uh, dry, it's not very uh, sticky but it is a little sticky, I would say. So keep on kneading this until it all comes together and becomes a, a smoother uh, dough-like consistency. Just keep kneading it like you see. This process takes a good five, six minutes, I would say, maybe up to total, start to finish, probably about 10 minutes. So just keep kneading it well. To make the mixture, uh, it doesn't take too long actually. Uh, once you've uh, mixed it all up like this, you just uh, make sure you uh, oil a, a bowl lightly and uh, then place it in the bowl and uh, cover the mixture with some more oil and then with a, either a damp cloth or use clim film so no air can get to it. We don't want to create a uh, kind of uh, a dryness on top. So what I do is just put clean film and make sure it's tight on and no air can get in. Or you can just put a damp uh, cloth over it like we used to do in the restaurant. In the restaurant we used to first cover it with uh, a plastic and then we would uh, cover it with a damp cloth. We're nearly ready there as you can see it's all coming together and uh, it's looking good. It's not as sticky as when we first started. I haven't really cut much of uh, this uh, video because I, I, I needed uh, you to see uh, the process of making the naan mix because it's very important that you watch uh, 
uh, how it's done because uh, um, a lot of people they don't seem to watch the videos correctly you must uh, uh, watch my videos from start to finish uh, to have an uh, idea how it's all done otherwise you won't be learning you know, when I first started learning uh, cooking I used to watch my mum uh, in the kitchen because she was uh, a chef in uh, a restaurant and I think she must have been one of the only few Indian chefs uh, working in an Indian restaurant uh, she worked really hard and I used to help her in the kitchen uh, when I was like uh, 13, 14 and uh, also after school and weekends and I used to watch what she used to do and that's how I learned so basically what I'm doing exactly like my mum uh, did is uh, I'm showing you in my videos how to make the naan mix uh, and uh, if you watch it you will learn uh, simple as that so you have to watch my videos from start to finish uh, to make sure that you see all the process not skip uh, bits because then it won't turn out right and you'll think to my, yourself that you know what went wrong there so watch the video uh, if need watch it twice before you start that way it give you the, all the necessary information you need so we're nearly there now we've just given it a little bit more need in here uh, and then we're going to just put it in the bowl and leave it till next day and uh, another thing is if you uh, haven't subscribed uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel uh, so that basically you get notified when I post new recipes because what I'm doing is uh, uh, posting recipes every week so uh, uh, giving people an in-depth uh, look into uh, cooking restaurant style curries and also traditional curries so uh, you have a lot of knowledge out there uh, so please uh, uh, subscribe and hit the notification button uh, to get notified anyway we're nearly uh, ready there uh, we're just going to uh, cover this with a little bit of oil uh, and uh, put it in a bowl and uh, clim flim it clim film it uh, as they say and that's it job done so this is the first stage of uh, basically making our nun mixture it's not that difficult <laughs> once you know how uh, so get yourself a bowl first oil the bowl uh, inside just use all normal vegetable oil give that a good uh, rub all over us and then put your uh, dough This is where I uh, make uh, perfect knives. The texture is right, the mixture is right, uh, and it's not too dry and it's not too wet. So just cover the top with uh, a little bit of oil, not too much, just a little bit of oil, just to uh, make sure uh, no air can get to it. And uh, then uh, get some clean film and basically cover it and uh, uh, leave that in the fridge for the next day. But before you do that, you must uh, put clim film on it or cover it with a, a damp cloth. The best I find is clim film. Uh, you just make sure it's all airtight when you put it on. And uh, basically that will do the job as well. Today I'm also going to show you how to uh, make a Peshwari naan mix. Uh, a lot of people have asked me for this uh, recipe, which is very simple to make. So I'm going to incorporate this into this video as well and uh, show you how uh, to make the mixture. So uh, that's it. That's the naan ready to go into the fridge for tomorrow. And uh, we'll come back to that uh, later. Right, now let's ha make a uh, Peshwari naan mixture. This is quite a simple mixture and very tasty. First we're going to use some sultanas, uh, probably here I've, I'm using probably uh, a good uh, tablespoon of, table, two tablespoons of sultanas, uh, chopped up thinly and uh, place that in the bowl, just like so. This is a very simple uh, mix, this is the kind of mix we use in the restaurant and uh, to this we're going to add uh, coconut powder and some sugar and almond powder 
So add a t tablespoon of uh, sugar, uh, about a good heap uh, tablespoon of uh, almonds, and a good two two and a half tablespoon of uh, uh, coconut powder. Now mix that all in well, and to bind all this together, we're going to add uh, carnation milk. This will this will uh, put everything together basically. So give that a good mix. Uh, the mixture should be uh, not too dry, but it shouldn't be too wet either. It should be just enough because we don't want uh, we want the mixture to uh, kind of spread easily inside the naan when we make it. So this is like the consistency one. Uh, remember, well, once uh, you leave it for a little while, it will start to dry a little bit. So this is the consistency, and uh, we'll put that to uh, one side uh, for tomorrow to uh, make our peshwari naan. So you can make this on the day, or you can make it in advance and cover it with uh, cling film and leave in the fridge. But once you leave this in the fridge, it will go hard. So if you leave it in the fridge and it goes hard, just uh, add a little bit of milk to it, carnation milk, and uh, make it to the same consistency as you see. Right, the following day, we are going to start preparing to get our uh, naan uh, ball doughs ready. I'm uh, measuring them out to about 200 grams. Uh, which I find is the right size. This is the size we used to use in the restaurants, but roughly about 200 grams. But uh, we never measured it. It was uh, purely by feel. So uh, this is uh, how you're supposed to uh, get your nut dough balls ready, is turn it gently using your thumb uh, and uh, kind of making a, a, a ball. And make sure you put the bottom side down first. So uh, dust a tray, like you see. This uh, we're going to do uh, is like uh, four hours or five hours before we uh, make our nuns. And what you have to do is leave them on the tray and basically uh, cover them with plastic first, either a clean film or a plastic bag or something and then cover it with a damp cloth so it doesn't dry and what you do is leave this at room temperature very important don't put it in the fridge it must be at room temperature for a good four to five hours just leave it out and then it's ready to make naans this is where people go wrong uh, they leave it in the fridge and when they go to make it either it's too cold and it doesn't stick to the uh, tandoori oven and uh, it just falls off uh, but the key is to make your dough balls and uh, leave them out at room temperature you'll find that if you have extra nuns they do freeze so you can put them in a zip bag and freeze them once you've made them that's what we do we just make a a load and just freeze them then when we want an arm bread we can just take it out uh, and heat it up under the grill which uh, works fine it's never as nice as the uh, freshly made naans that you get out of the oven but it's still nice so just make the dough balls make sure you cover it well with flour all, all around the sides so they don't stick to each other You know, these won't rise anymore, they just go soft. Uh, if you put yeast, <laughs> this is what I mean, if you put yeast in uh, uh, these, they would rise even bigger. So that's why we don't use yeast. I'm not sure uh, where people got the idea of using yeast in naan breads because the texture will become like a bread dough, like, yeah, like a bread dough, like a pizza dough. So you're not really making naan bread, you're making a pizza naan, if that's correct, yes. I think so, pizza naan, yes. Because I saw a video the other day, and uh, that's uh, how they look to me. They look like a pizza naan. Yeah, maybe we should just call them a pizza naan. Anyway, that's it. We Make sure you uh, get the cloth and... Uh, put it under the tap and really wet, wet it well and then cover it 
So uh, now we're going to get the tandoori oven ready because uh, people have asked me how to uh, get this ready and they seem to be going wrong. Now the quantity of uh, charcoal you need to use is uh, roughly about two and a half uh, kilos of charcoal. I put 2.7 in this oven and as you can see I've put a metal grate over the door so that helps uh, from the charcoal falling out. So if you can find yourself a little metal grate like I've sh shown in the video, uh, put it just where the door is and then put the charcoal in. Now I, I've just used the ordinary uh, kind of fuel to get this going and uh, you need to get it going a good hour before you use it. So uh, I, I've, uh, this is like 30 minutes of uh, the charcoal burning in the oven and uh, what you have to do, where the flame is on the, uh, the door side, you open it at the back side. So, it, well, let's begin now to cook the tandoori chicken. First, we're going to uh, skewer it, uh, but make sure it's not too close to the uh, charcoal, the bottom section. I think maybe it's better to cook one piece of chicken on one skewer because the tandoori oven is not long enough, really. Uh, for two pieces of chicken because it seems to uh, kind of burn too quick at the bottom. So uh, I think uh, in future I shall cook uh, one piece of chicken uh, in this oven instead of two. So it will be much easier. So basically, you know, twist and bend the chicken and make sure it's really tightly fit. And once you put this chicken in the oven, don't move it for a good five minutes so it's nicely firmly in place on the skewer. So after about five minutes all you do basically is just turn it around gently uh, so it gets evenly cooked and keeping the door closed as well. So once the chicken is cooked then we are ready to do the naans but as you can see it cooks very quickly. What we want to do is main retain the moisture in the chicken but as well as cooking it quickly so this way the chicken is not dry and just like with the meat as well, you do the same principle, you cook it quick. So basically the meat retains the moisture. And uh, this chicken has been marinated for 24 hours, but to get maximum flavor, we can marinate it for 48 hours. It'd be fine in the fridge. So as you can see, uh, it's very quickly done and uh, we're ready now. Don't worry about the charred bits, they just come off and uh, it gives uh, the chicken lots of flavour. So uh, this is my tandoori chicken, all ready uh, to eat, but now we have to make our naan breads to go with it. So uh, let's begin with our naan breads. That looks beautiful, doesn't it, really? Okay, now we're ready, let's cook our naan breads gets really hot. Now after about hour and 10, uh, hour and 15 minutes, uh, we've cooked our uh, chicken uh, and uh, now I'm going to show you how to cook uh, the naans. First uh, we're going to uh, make the peshwari naan ready because what we want to do is put, put it in uh, the naan and leave it to rest for a little while before we actually make the naan. You, uh, in the restaurant they used to do it straight away and uh, it, it's fine but if you leave it in the, the dough, the mixture for a little while it's fine and this is how you close it up uh, you kind of uh, close it gently like so as you can see uh, and then gently uh, just roll it again as you did when you was making the ball uh, and then make sure it's all nicely covered with flour and put it down and leave it to rest. That's going to be the Peshwari naan. One day I shall show you how to make uh, the garlic naan and the cheese naan. Okay, now uh, we're ready uh, to cook our naans. Now cooking our naans, you have to be very quick. Uh, normally a uh, few seconds in and out the oven. Uh, you can practice this uh, on your stomach, uh, which I used to tell my tandoori chefs. What you do is you go in, touch your stomach, go left, right and up. Left, right and up. 
you can use uh, someone else's stomach if you want. Just practice. Go. All you do is gently touch the uh, stomach. Go uh, left, right, and up. You don't need to add water to this uh, mixture. Uh, but make sure you wet your hands like this because the oven's going to be very hot. At least 500 degrees the oven's going to be. Yeah? So uh, wet your hand like this. I don't use uh, any cushions to put naans in and I never taught any of my tandoori chefs to do that. We use our hand uh, because we can feel much better when we touch the uh, inside of the oven. So get it like this, as you can see. Right? And then, then just go round, basically, and in, watch, in, left, right, and out. That's it. See how quick? That was a matter of uh, two or three seconds, the most, I reckon. So in, out, and that's it. That's your naan done. Then close the door a little bit so the heat uh, cooks the naan. This will be done really quickly, so uh, be ready to take it out. The oven is really hot now, so you have to be careful not to burn. Hey, that's cooking perfectly. Just close it like so. To retain the heat. This is what we're doing. We're retaining the heat. That's looking good. Like to, my tandoori chefs will Normally, be able to when just it's done take at that the bottom of the hand. But the whole naan is cooked. That's the way it works. So as the bottom is done, now we're ready to take this out. There you go. Perfect naan. And this is how you make naan breads. It's nice and soft. Uh, it's uh, cooked well. But the naan uh, oven has to be the correct temperature. This is the key. And when you put in the naan breads, like the where I've place that other naan first. You must not put the another naan in the same position. It won't stick. You have to give time for that area to become hot again. So what I'm going to do is this Peshwari naan, I'm going to move to a different side uh, and that way uh, you won't get naans which uh, fall off. They basically uh, keep sticking. You don't need to add any water to this. If the oven is correct temperature and your mixture is uh, all correct, uh, it should stick. As soon as you touch the oven with the naan, the naan will stick to the oven. Like, watch this. In, out. Ah, how quick was that? See, that's how quick it should be. Now, if you're, if you're a good tandoori chef, this is how quick... Uh, you make your naans and uh, I used to judge tandoori chefs by the way they used to make their naans if they couldn't make their naans uh, just like this then I wouldn't give them a job simple as that uh, because a lot of people in uh, the trade would come to work and they would say they are tandoori chefs and uh, I would say okay make me a stuffed naan a garlic naan and a plain naan and I would watch them how they make it. And if they weren't any good, then they wouldn't get the job. So watch this again. Another side. In, out. That's it. Perfect naans. This is how you must make the naans. I hope this uh, video uh, will help uh, people with charcoal ovens to make their naan breads. But if uh, you haven't got an oven like this, you can make this naan on a tower. A tower or any... Uh, uh, frying pan but what you need is a grill as well so basically you would do this and make it big then you put it on a really hot uh, tower or a frying pan and let it cook only about a uh, matter of a couple of minutes uh, and then you take it off the heat and put it straight under a really hot grill and uh, that's it uh, once you see the color change uh, your nun's done that's my Peshwari naan there, and as you can see, perfect. And that will be really nice as well. And uh, I hope this video will help uh, uh, the people who've asked uh, me to uh, uh, make uh, a video showing how to make naans. Uh, and I uh, hope it helped the people who are thinking of buying uh, a tandoori oven like this 
uh, because they are really good and uh, you can cook all your meats in this uh, and then at the end cook your naan breads you don't want to cook your naan breads at the beginning you want to cook them at the end when the oven is more settled and at a constant temperature so two and a half kilos to 2.7 kilos of charcoal you need to put in this oven and you need to heat it up for a good hour uh, before you start cooking and when you do start cooking you cook your meats first and once your meats are cooked then you cook your naans uh, this is the perfect way to uh, cook naan bread uh, and the only way in my eyes but uh, nowadays in restaurants they have uh, gas fired tandoori ovens uh, they rarely use uh, they rarely use uh, charcoal nowadays but uh, uh, don't worry about this uh, burn bit we can just chop that bit off and uh, it's still good so now I'm going to just make uh, the remainder of naans for freezing so I'm going to cook all, all these together and I'm going to show you how quickly it's done now I'm going to just finish off the remainder of the naans for freezing so what I'm going to do is just make these four and basically uh, put them in a zip bag after they cool down and freeze them for another time so I hope this be uh, video has been beneficial for people who are using charcoal fired uh, clay ovens because there is a knack to it and it takes a long time to learn uh, how to use a, a gas uh, charcoal fired oven because uh, nowadays they don't use uh, charcoal anymore it's mostly gas because of the cost involved there may be a few out there who are still using charcoal but uh, everyone I know is using gas now and before we uh, closed our restaurants we used uh, gas in the end uh, because uh, it was much cheaper and much cleaner as well but anyway uh, remember when you're putting in these nans always uh, uh, work clockwise so uh, make sure that you put uh, one naan uh, on one side and then work with your way around never put naans uh, on the same place you've taken it off they won't stick so I hope this uh, video has been beneficial to everybody uh, it is a long video but I had to do it this way to show people how to use the tandoori oven so uh, I know after you've watched this uh, you will have a good idea of how to use your oven and uh, best would be to uh, keep watching this every time you uh, go to use your oven watch the video first and then uh, start using it and that will give you a bit more experience so good luck and uh, let me know how you get on before I go this is a message to Paul Edge uh, who uh, asked me originally to make a video showing how to use the tandoori oven so I hope this uh, video will be beneficial to you Paul and uh, you learn to make uh, the perfect nice restaurant quality ones like I have done today so let me know how you get on and uh, if uh, uh, you've got the gist of uh, using your tandoori oven. Bye for now.